Hi all and welcome at my channel, that's me, your alternate C in the place to be. NC In the place to be NC Yeah, on this video I'm gonna show you a great thing. Um, so if you are looking for, uh, we can say, a small high-end computer, um, you should uh, watch this video. Um, yeah, it not must be always the we can say the the, the best thing. Uh, you don't need to waste a lot of money. Um, I'm gonna show you now uh, with old components how you can get you we can say a small high-end computer, which is we can say um, the same as strong as the PlayStation 4 we can say, and it compares to you if you got money for a great graphics card then of course it will be a lot better as a PlayStation 4 or whatever. Um, on this video I'm going to show you how you can do your really um, cheap. Um, I'm talking here about that you don't need to waste so much money. Uh, you, you're going to be, um, we can say, able uh, to do you a small high-end computer with about 200 or 300 euros. And this will be a great computer. So for now I got here, like you can see, an Asus motherboard and this is a um, socket 775. So um, the, we can say the time has passed and the, the, the things get cheaper. And the great thing is um, you can get here great, uh, we can say, quad core processors from Intel. Um, Intel are really one of the best processors and um, you should go also for Intel if you want to have a high-end computer or whatever. Um, on this video I'm going to show you uh, how you will be able uh, to do you a small high-end computer which will be, we can say, really comparable with a PlayStation 4 or whatever. Uh, the thing is, what you should know is um, you got here, like I told, the Socket 775, a great CPU for this motherboard is, we can say, an Intel Q6600. Um, people that, uh, we can say, people that understand a bit from computer, uh, they really know um, that I'm not talking bullshit. Uh, one of the best uh, processors for this motherboard was the Intel Q6600. It was really uh, a great uh, processor. Um, we can say it has, uh, it had um, four cores with six megabyte cache and it was running on 2.4 GHz and you could overclock it on 3.2 GHz without problems. And that's why I'm showing you this video here now because you can do a lot of stuff if you got an we can say a great motherboard with the socket 775. So um yeah that you can understand um I got you now here a, a processor this is a a normal standard processor. This is, we can say, uh, Intel um, Pentium Dual Core processor, which it has uh, two cores uh, at 1.6 GHz, like you can see. Um, now I'm going to show you another one. This is a great processor too uh, from Intel. It it is the Intel Q8200. Uh, it has four cores at uh, 2.33 GHz, and now. I'm going to show you a great thing. This is an Intel Xeon and this processor was normally made for, we can say, servers. So this here is not made for socket 775. This uh, CPU here was made for socket uh, 771. So here you will need, a, we can say, server motherboard or whatever. Um, this Xeons here are very cheap right now and are very, very strong. Um, compare it to the standard uh, Intel 775 uh, processors. So um, this is the thing that I want to show you. I, um, I'm going to show you how you can be able uh, to put a, a Xeon processor into a socket 775. Um, the thing is, this processors, like I told, are made for socket 771. Um, I'm going to just hold it here right now that you can see the difference. The only difference is that they have these two uh, uh, size here, we can say this. these two um, spaces, they just have um, done it on the other side so that you, you will not be able uh, to get into the socket. So wait quick, um, this is now 
we can say that on the right side we got here uh, the Intel for socket 775 and here we got a processor for the socket 771. At last all is the same just here we can say this um, yeah, holes here are on another place. You can see here it's black here, here down and here it's black too. So um, you can see the, the size of the processors are now uh, perfectly the same. But these three spaces here, like you can see, they are not on the same size. So you will need um, to prepare your Xeon CPU, but I recommend to prepare the socket. Because to prepare the socket, um, it's way easier and you don't need to damage uh, or we can say to scratch your CPU. Um, yeah, <laughs> the other thing is also, um, I have just bought me this CPU, this Xeon, um, on eBay and this stupid guy just sent me this uh, processor just in a shitty thing like this here, you see? <laughs> and uh, it was not, uh, we can say, it was not protected. Normally, um, you got on the CPUs, you got the stuff like this here, yeah. So it's protected. But this stupid guy just sends me in, in here inside, and the thing is that I have no ties. Um, one SMD transistor was broken. So um, yeah, I don't wanted to send it back because I have a great soldering skills, and. Um, if you can see it was this one here so um, yeah this uh, we can say SMD <laughs> uh, is broken or was broken and I have sold it back I hope um, this has contact because um, the solder contact was broken so I had need uh, to take the SMD uh, a little bit more down because the, the the, we can say solder contact was damaged too. Um, but whatever, this is a surprise for me also uh, to see if this will work or not. <laughs> if yes, then congrats and see you are back in the place to be. Haha. <laughs> okay, um, the other thing like I told, you should first um, check your motherboard. And uh, I will need a lot of zoom now to uh, demonstrate you this guys. And the other thing is, you should first open we can say your 775 socket you just open it and now you can see um, wait let me just take this one here okay and now you can see um, you got here you see this you got here a pin and um, on this side yeah so the processor is forced um, to get like this inside okay now you see it fits perfect in and it's really perfectly but if you take we can say a uh, Xeon from the 771 socket then it's something like this and you will not be able to get it inside because of this pins here okay I'm just showing you this um, that you need you need really to know about this sorry my camera um, okay I got here like I told um, this is what? This is the, the dual core, sorry guys. And here I got the Q8200, which is yeah fitting perfectly on the socket 775. Just take a look. Here we go. Okay. It fits perfectly inside because also of these pins here. That's just perfect. And um, you cannot move it because it's really, yeah, it sits perfectly inside. So this is now a processor made for socket 775 which is the Q8200. Now let's take my, uh, we can say, repaired Xeon because of this stupid guy. <laughs> but I hope this will work. Um, I think yes. I'm not sure but I think yes. Okay, uh, now again the same thing. This should be like that normally but you can see the free spaces there are here and the other one is here so this will never be possible but I just want to show you this guys that you know that you need to take care so you, you see it, it's not possible okay so now I hope you understand and that's why I'm showing you the next step what you do or what you need to do to have a great small high-tech or high-end computer um, the thing is also 
you should know um, you should now we can say take a great um, screw drill or whatever um, I got here one I got here lots of bits you like you can see and um, I got here also a very small one and with this one this is we can say a screwdriver and I got here a lot of them and you just take just like this one but very small it should be also a bit sharp okay so and now um, you don't need any any razor blade nothing um, now let me just focus I'm gonna put the camera I think wait on this side and um, so wait guys because this will be a bit difficult to record this all for you guys so here we go now you are able to see that so now you go over there and you take care let me see if I can focus it more and then you take care and you just try to cut it here a bit okay and take a lot care at these pins because they are so um, sensible and uh, you don't yeah destroy it okay so the first one is out now here it is just work careful okay um, later uh, you just take care maybe if you see that you have um, yeah damage one pin or whatever you can just pull it up just like me okay just take it and pull it a bit up and test it all yeah okay this is now flying away that's great like that and you should also clean it very very great you should clean it you should look that um, later you see cut it you so should really look that later all is sitting root great and perfect wait I'm trying to work like that because it's really difficult now the camera is on my left side and it's hard for me now so take again a look here on the pins and they should not lie a lot down because they need, they need later contact to the CPU otherwise this will be not possible okay but if you got a razor blade just like this one um, you can go about there and really be careful what we are doing here because this uh, yeah will be sad for the motherboard and um, I hope you can see still on yeah, so, la -la. so yeah I'm trying to uh, show you this so good as I can that it's not that um, it's not that easy for me okay this is a professional doctor work <laughs> and okay now it's good looks good take all the dirt out and test also the pins if necessary um, take the pin a bit more up or down and control if it's moving great or not because it needs to move great later and if you got dirt under there or whatever this is not good so I see it's all great all great now I'm gonna do this one here so okay now the focus I know it's not the best and it's not so sharp because I got really a lot of zoom and this is not so good for my smartphone and here we go again just try to cut it slowly down this material uh, we can say this plastic here is not that hard really just careful you see that it goes easy here we go so take care that you don't uh, cut too much inside you you can't make a hole here 
and this is not um, this is not that bad but you should not press too much down otherwise you will do a big hole inside and you will scratch the motherboard so that's why take care when I'm finished I will take my smartphone out from the tree pot and then I'm gonna show you this better because it's really too much zoom so let me just clean it a bit more and here also okay guys this was now the work and now let's quick zoom back and let's see if the Xeon is fitting inside perfectly. Take a look. Aha, here we go. Okay? It just sits perfect and you should check this too. So um yeah. Put it away. If necessary, um clean it a bit more and really take care that you have no plastic under the pins here. I'm gonna take now my smartphone out, just a quick pause. Okay, and here we go now. Um, yep, you can see it now, okay? So wait. It's really uh, difficult for me to um, show you this. So the the pin was here. Wait. I need to zoom again. Here it was, okay. One was here. The second one was here. And this is the small hole that I have made. I can tell you guys, I have made some more holes as just this one <laughs> on another a lot small of motherboards but you just need to take care and all is great so if this happens to you just take care that the, um, we can say that the razor blade or whatever you take to take this out um, it doesn't yeah gets too much down and you should not damage um, your motherboard okay um, now like I told here um, this is the yeah Q8800 you can still put the older um, processors inside without problem, like you can see. Okay, here we go. You just need to know that um, the black uh, side from the processor, we can say on this side where the processor makes this part here, or, or we can say has this part here, uh, this should go down, always to the direction where it closes. Okay, so you can, um, yeah can save you this and don't forget that okay so the black side um, of the processor which is made here this or we can say which has this free space here goes always down okay like here so um, now where's Xeon here let's test this guy again great it fits in can just close it and test it yeah it's great so next thing what you need now it's a mod sticker a modification sticker because two of these contacts they should um, work together now I'm gonna put my smartphone back on the tripod just a second so now it's back and I can record it better um, now I'm gonna show you a small sticker where it is wait 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 here it is okay just zoom back here I got some of them here so here we go um so this is a small sticker which um needs to go on the Xeon processor because you got here um, two contacts and these two contacts here they uh, we can say uh, they are needed 
for the motherboard and for the processor otherwise the processor will not work okay this here are we can say two pins which are together and um, this is the only thing that you need to change on the processor so here um, I will just um, yeah show you how it works I will explain you how you should put this on the Xeon processor so now it just um, so just turn the processor to this side okay and now you got here this symbol here okay you need to have this symbol on the right side down okay just like this symbol here you got here also a symbol which shows you the direction and this is this one here so I hope you can see that yeah it's all very very small <laughs> but it makes fun guys it makes fun um, and then you just place it over here so wait I'm gonna take this away here um, this direction shows you where the sticker needs to be place it then you got this line here this line needs to be free the contacts goes over here and here I'm gonna show you this now so and then you need to count uh, about four one two three four so let's turn this I'm gonna place it just right now without to glue it or without to fix it because I'm gonna do this later without video so this needs to go all very slow here so it needs to get here okay and you can see the sticker has a lot of holes so that is necessary for the pins on the socket 775 that it, uh, it that it still gets contact so guys um very difficult to record this for you guys but i'm trying really my best so um like i told um here is the direction of the sticker and here you can see up where is your limit and then it just needed to um fix it and glue it perfectly okay i'm going to do this now without camera because this is really hard for me now i'm going to need to first um wait focus like i told guys very hard to record this it's also small um you need first to take this um paper out here under there is we can say the glue so here we go one time And don't touch it too much with your dirty fingers because this should uh, be really nice and clean. Otherwise, this will not uh, glue that, or it will not f uh, hold that great. I hope you guys understand me. I could speak German too, so you would understand nothing more. So here we go. Okay, guys. Um. Now let's take it here again, turn it to that side like I told. So at last I have just done it with you guys together. And now let's just place it on the right side. Should go over here. This one needs to go a bit more up. Yeah, but it's already good like that. So and 
and you can see this these two contacts are under there they are together they are soldered together we can say and it must be like that otherwise the the pins will not have uh, a great contact so it should look like that if you see the sticker is here bad um, then you can just clean it so wait I'm gonna try to focus this hard but it's working my hand is shaking too much so I see I can go a bit more up yeah just a little bit more up and here a little bit more to the right side I'm gonna do that now and I record again soon so guys I have just now placed it um, so good as I called and now this should look like that okay so here you see it should be here and this symbol shows you uh, the direction on this okay it must be the same so now um, again slowly just uh, let's put this back on the motherboard and then we are good to go and to test if this all is working with my repair it <laughs> SMD resistor which is over here so but let's see if this is gonna work okay guys now just take care and I recommend you to put it like this first and then close it okay also we can say go slowly so wait because here with one hand is just bad or we can say just yeah with a camera on my way just disturbing sometimes so I hope you can see that great and now just hold it here and let it fall all right um close it hold it down a bit and lock it all right okay we are now ready for a small test we can say I'm gonna put this over here and now haha you will need of course a memory so um this one here has I think one gigabyte yeah it's DDR2 800 megahertz um, with one gigabyte uh, RAM and this is fully enough just to test it um, the next thing of course is a PSU so and then uh, let's see which side it's this side okay I need to turn it down or we can say around and I need to connect it here so and uh, Azu take care that your PSU is off okay here on the side so wait here take care that your PSU is off not like me <laughs> okay um whatever this was not that bad it's all still okay no panic on Titanic we got water for all all right uh yeah let's go over here of course you will need also power to the cpu itself which is here here we go all right this one yeah okay so now it's good so far and um you should also need of course a cooler but I don't have now one because you don't need Azo right now. We don't need a cooler. You just can take a heatsink just like me. And for the test, it's just enough. I just want to test now also if the CPU is really working. Otherwise, I will not be able to show you this video. Okay, of course you should, um, yeah, have a monitor. <laughs> and wait, so. I'm gonna put this one here 
I want to connect it. All right, and um, here we go. Okay. So, for now it's all great. I've just connected over here. This is a great motherboard. Okay, just that I wanted to tell you. This is a great mother. It's a micro RTX motherboard which has socket 775 with the chipset that you need to make these modifications. I'm gonna later post you a link on the video description and there you will be able to read about all. Um, Alright, uh, now I just need some thermal paste um, which I have not here right now. Oh, let's see. I think not, but I'm gonna just, yeah, just wait a second, guys. Ah, I found it, guys. Here we go. Just take some uh, thermal past a bit, just for the test. We just do here really a small dot, and then. Take care at your cooler also um, that you don't put the cooler over here. It will not sit perfectly if you don't take care. So mine is sitting great. Just hold it down a bit so this will have some pressure and the uh, thermal compound will spread. Okay, now it's time for the true. I don't know. I really don't know, guys. I really don't know if this processor will work. But I don't care. If not, I'm gonna do this video again one time <laughs> when I have, uh, yeah, bought me a new, we can say, Xeon processor. Okay, um, but I need to talk with this guy because this is shit. He can't ship me this processor just like that. On the stuff like this. He just has put the processor here inside, you know. What the hell? Okay, now um, on some motherboards you got here. Wait, here you got uh, written, we can say, um, the reset button or here the power switch and and and. And I already can see on this motherboard two pins are, we can say, a bit, yeah, uh, not broken, but. A bit not in place. Just take care and just fix it. So, because these are later the connectors for your computer case. Okay, don't break them. Just careful. They should, yeah, work right now. This one just a bit back. Yep, here we go. So the rest looks good, and this is great like that. So over here, I can see the power switch. P W R S W. That means power switch. These are these two contacts here. And now, um, yeah, I'm gonna uh, just hold. We can say a screw drill or a bit. It should be something, um, yeah, of metal or whatever. You should uh, need here. You need to put in some contact, and then it will turn on. It will also turn on your PSU and all the rest. I'm gonna now just uh, turn on my monitor. Here we go. Now it's on my PSU. Then it should go here the lights on. So wait. Ding. All right. And then uh, you have no fan, so you cannot see if the motherboard will turn on. But when the uh, PSU is turning, then you know the motherboard is on. The thing is, I don't know if you, if you will uh, get some display or not, because the processor <laughs> was damaged and um, yeah, I just have tried to fix this at my way. So I'm going to put it here so you can see, or you will be may maybe uh, be able to see when the PSU is turning or not. Alright, so let's test it and here we go. For now it's going on. And let's see. Yeah, it works, it works, it works. 
Hey, it works, wait, here. <laughs> great, 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 great. Later I'm gonna do some benching tests and some stress tests to see if the process is really running good. But whatever. Um, for now we are inside. In the BIOS we can say, not really. But um, it's a great sign. Um, so, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I'm really happy because I was thinking that this processor is damaged totally. Okay, you will now re uh, you will now need a keyboard. All right, then um, you will need um, the dongle and you will need an USB stick, just like this or like this, because you will need to make the newest firmware update. You should install the newest firmware update, and then we're gonna mod. We can say we're gonna modificate the BIOS and then it's great. Alright, let me just quick pause, I need my notebook right now. So guys, here's my uh, dongle for my keyboard and now let's just power off um, the system so it uh, stays longer, cooler we can say because I got no fan over here and um, this is just now for the test. I do it always like that, so please guys, don't piss me on. <laughs> okay, here's the dongle and um, let's just connect it. Okay. A bit strange here, but here it's great. But yeah, maybe this is all too new. All right, it's great. Dongle is inside. Yeah, this is inside. All this inside. Uh, now the thing is, you should um, go to the internet. I'm gonna do this now. And here we go. So here we go. But the other thing is also you can first get inside the BIOS and let's see which uh, BIOS is inside. All right, now let's turn it on again and take a screw drill or whatever and hold it on these two contacts. And then it goes on. Here we go. So now take your keyboard and press the light or F1. Here we go. So, I'm gonna put the camera here. Yeah, it looks great. I love it. Okay, now let's check it out and let's go to system information. And we have, oh, I think this is very old. <laughs> but look, it's written CPU E5450 at 3 GHz. Okay, speed 3 GHz. And here is the memory, the RAM, the, yeah. And here you can see also the boot date and here the version 0202. I got the same motherboard and I know this is very old and that's why I tell you guys. Um, now, um, if you go to boot, you can just um, disable all and uh, you, you can have, you can let your hard drive, yes it's okay and then let's disable this shit now go back, you should also first um, of course before I forget you should do a load setup default because it's always better then you press F10 save it and exit alright then um, go back again with um, the LED or F1, it confirms the motherboard and the great thing is also that uh, Xeons, they are, um, yeah, they don't need so much of power. That's why they they get not so fast hot. Okay, and you should know this all. This is why I tell you this, guys. So now it's written a CPU fan error, which is also right. We got here no CPU fan. Okay, now. Um, like I told, we got here the version 
um, 0 to 0 to. So that means in my eyes this is very very old. Uh, then let's just um, yeah shut down the computer. You just can go here on the PSU and just shut it down. Okay, now we need to go to the ASUS page and download the latest um, BIOS, which is also always recommended for the Xeons. And um, so the name is ASUS, the motherboard is P5Q and we got here EM. Okay, let's go for drivers. Yeah. Here we go. So and now blah blah blah. Yeah, let's go here to BIOS and firmware. And we get here 2203. Of course this is way newer. Okay, now it just can download it and just save it. Okay, it's saved. Let's close this window. And um, you can see my daughter is no problem. But I need this window here. Um, I got here also the 771 micro codes, which is needed for the BIOS. So if you turn on the computer, you will maybe have somewhere written um, newer CPU notice it, uh, you should do a CPU update, but maybe you have already the newest update and this uh, information will always come um, into you have, we can say, modded your BIOS. Uh, the information that you have changed the CPU or that you have a newer CPU and you should do an update please, uh, this will just disappear when you have installed the micro codes for the uh, socket 771. But I'm going to show you this all and then we can say the video is finished. And here are the micro codes inside which I will uh, show you later. Okay, uh, we got now here the, we can say, um, BIOS update from ASUS which we have just downloaded. Just check it out and put it to your desktop. Here we go. Close it. Now just take an USB stick and connect it. Okay, um, let's go. Like I told, I have already all here inside. Like you can see, I'm gonna just delete it because I already told you I have done lots of motherboards of this ones. That's why I just showing you how this all will work. Okay, now um, you got this over here. Close it, and now you can visit this page. So, delighted.com, you can go over here and here you can see all what you need. You can find all. Okay, so, and there you go down and you search for the LGI or LGA 771 Xeon microcode. Um, you should go here and then you should see what you need uh, to download. It, conform, it conforms which BIOS you have and you should also get here inside and read a bit because this modification is not on all 775 motherboards possible. Okay? Um, so now you can go here, I think it was here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is the, the micro from for uh, Amy BIOSes and you can go here and you should also check all if you got the Army BIOS or whatever and then you will need in this case like like me you will need this tool here and um, save it this tool lets you we can say mod uh, your BIOS, your standard BIOS. So just delete it and OK. Um, I have just deleted it because I have it already. So that's why 
I'm going to just open it. I'm going to put it here inside. So you can also see the symbol. This is the, the same symbol here as on some motherboards when uh, the computer is starting. So this is the tool where you need to, we can say, modificate your BIOS. Um, the other thing is, I will try now to show you this message. Um, I don't know how, but I'm going to try it somewhere. It should be possible to show you the message. Maybe we'll tap. Let's tap on my keyboard. So, yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Please enter setup recovery and your settings. Here. Here. Okay. I got it. So, this is the message. Unknown CPU is detected. Updating BIOS is required to unleash its full power. Um, that means. Um, <laughs> The CPU is working right now, okay? This is no question. But um, to get this working perfectly, you should get in the BIOS the micro codes for the uh, Xeon processors, okay? And this is this what I'm going to show you right now, okay? Otherwise, you can use it, of course, yeah? But you will always have this um, information when you start your computer. This will always tell you Unknown CPU is detected, updating BIOS, please, and whatever, and whatever. Okay, so that's why we're going to do this now, and then this will never come anymore, because it's yeah detecting your right CPU. So, let's um, power it off again. Let's go back here. Now I'm going to show you how to do this, and this is the last step now for the video. The rest you should do all yourself, and you should get into this website and you should read a lot before you're doing this i'm just uh, showing you this guys that you yeah sorry guys uh the maximum of uh, we can say recording time uh, has reached and my smartphone just told me that it has stopped so uh whatever um you should like i told read a lot on the site on the website you should read a lot before you do this uh, i'm just showing you how this is working and how you can uh, get uh, uh, we can say a great, um, we can say a small high-end computer for less price, really just just very cheap guys and you don't need to buy the newest thing with this Xeon here you can still play Battlefield 3 and, and more it conforms your graphics card, yeah? but with this Xeon's uh, uh, with this Xeon's processors you can really play the newest games uh, with a better graphics than on the PlayStation 4 um, yeah, now let's uh, go over here because this video um, yeah gets nearly uh, yeah finished. And the next step now is you will need now, uh, of course, to download the LGA, uh, the socket 771 microcodes for the Xeon processors. You can find all on this page uh, that I have show you. So, um, and here's written all. I have just done this video for you guys that you know uh, or that you can see um, easy uh, how this all is working. But at last you should get here inside and read a lot, okay? Because, um, yeah, this you got here, you will have a lot of information here. Um, yeah, somewhere here you can download also, like I told, the micro codes and here's also all written. Uh, the sticker and how to um, yeah how to uh, put them in and and all I have just here uh, show you now um, how it's possible to do this all and on this website here really guys go inside here and you need to read a lot so um, now let's open this tool here and lo let's load the ROM this is the BIOS uh, which is on my desktop. So let me see if I can make it a bit brighter, yeah. So, um, you go now on the desktop and um, you should now search the BIOS. This is this one. So just open it and now you got here inside the BIOS. So let me go back a bit. 
maybe it's better for you guys. Now you go here to CPU patch and then you open now the 771 Xeon microcodes and you need to check if you got a 45 nanometer CPU or not. Um, the Xeon that I have is running on 45 nanometers. So here you got three files. I'm going to show you this now very easy. Um, you can do it also on the other way, but I'm going to show you how it's the easiest way. Um, then you just go here to delete a patch data. And then you just search for the 07A, uh, 067A, 067, 0676 and uh, the other one you got here one which is uh, the plot you can see here is 40 and here is 4 and here is 44 and you just can delete this three for the standard from the standard BIOS because you will not just update uh, the Xeon files the Xeon microcodes um, now you just search for the 067A, which is here one time, 067A, okay, and um, it just go here, market it, okay, now it's, you can see blue, 067A, and be sure that you have just really the right one, okay, just need to take a look on these numbers here, okay, but if you read a lot on this uh, website, you will um, learn a lot. Delete a patch data and I'm gonna delete this now. Now I'm going for 0676 this is this one and I'm gonna delete it also. And the next one is also again 0676 which I'm gonna delete it also. Now I'm gonna insert a patch data browse it desktop and then search the folder microcodes here it is then select 45 nanometers if you got the 45 nanometer processor and begin with the first one and aptly it will now we can say install it on our um, BIOS here we go then you go for the second one aptly and then you just take the third one Apply. and now you just save the ROM you can save it as and then you can save a second ROM you can have a, a ROM like the original one or the other one which is the modded for the Xeon processors but I'm gonna just save it over the standard one here we go do you want to override? yes so, now um, I'm going to just close this all, and um, here is the ROM file, the modded one. So, now just get into the USB stick, and uh, just put it inside. Here we go. Just wait a bit, and... Now let's take it off. So, here we go. Now back to the computer. And I need just to take this rubber out because this rubber here is so fat. <laughs> and sometimes it's not possible to get it inside. So, here we go. Now we got the USB stick inside and then. Oh, yeah, should go like that. Let's turn on this bad boy again. PSU on. Here we go. And turn it on. Okay. Looks good. I'm happy that the processor is working, otherwise this would be also a waste of money. 
Okay, uh, let's go with F1 to run setup. And uh, it's also always recommended to do again, uh, we can say to load the setup defaults again, but I have done it already, so this is for me no problem. You can go back now and you need to make a BIOS update on the ASUS motherboard, you find it here on ASUS Easy Flash. Um, let's press it and let's run it. So guys, come on zoom it a bit. Okay, now just press tab to go to the left side and select the USB drive. Yep. Then go down to the ROM file that we have just done it right now. Let's go. Yeah guys, like I told, uh, these processors are still very strong. You don't need any new shit to have a great gaming computer. Are you sure you want to update the BIOS? Yes, let's go. And like I told, if you get you a great uh, graphics card and some great DDR2 memories with, uh, we can say, uh, 1066 MHz, 1066 MHz, this is fully enough. What you do? You don't need more, really not. Uh, in five seconds, okay. I got here also some great um, yeah, RAMs, some great memories, DDR2 memories, very old, but still very strong and very great. You don't need any, any shit other, really not. Okay, guys, so if you have some problems or some trouble now with the BIOS update and whatever, then you can also find on my channel uh, a video how you can flash your own BIOS back so uh, I think on my YouTube channel <laughs> you can do a lot of shit and you will still be able to repair all. If you watch my videos you will find also how you can flash a BIOS over a USB BIOS programmer. Okay, um, now of course check it and let's see the system information and here we go 2203. So that means hallelujah. All right. Now, of course, also again, um, you should know latest do uh, the load setup defaults and okay, press F10, save and exit. Yeah, guys, and uh, like I told, don't forget what I'm telling you guys with this system here, you can still play the newest games right now. You can play Battlefield 3, you can play Battlefield 4, you can play. Uh, whatever, racing games, Need for Speed and whatever, really, if you get a, a great graphics card, this is all no problem for you guys. So now uh, I just have saw the, the BIOS, uh, I just wanted to show you now that also this message is not coming anymore. Normally you, sh you would have here um, um, pr uh, unknown processor detecting and blah blah blah, just the same thing that we had before, but it's not displaying anymore because the BIOS now um, is, we can say, with the same uh, micro codes uh, what the CPU is needed. So uh, the BIOS has now no problems anymore to detect the real CPU. Um, have I forget something? I think not. Now you can go over here again, but this was okay. Let me now just uh, go to the boot options and disable the shit all. Uh, here. Yeah, it's okay. See on. Let's do here the type see or whatever. For now, I can disable this shit, you know. Just um, that you can see. Um, and this I don't need it also. Just that you can see now that you really don't have any message anymore. I'm going to press Tab again for the BIOS post. Here we go. Okay. But this was so fast now. Huh? Yeah, this was too fast. Wait. Yeah, but it's okay. You will not have any more the message here because now he has detect the CPU and all the rest, and that's great. Okay. Here you got no CPU fan error because we got no fan inside, and that's fully normal. This message. So when you have put here a fan inside, and you have connected the fan to the motherboard. 
then all is running perfect. Okay, guys, this was uh, for me. NSC in the place to be. He <laughs> he with a high end PC, uh, an old one, <laughs> but a great one, really, guys. I'm gonna not just turn it off because I don't want that the CPU runs too hot. And um, yeah, I have no fun inside. This was just for the tests. And like I told, I have just done uh, one more here. I need just to show you this, guys. So this is also one great thing here. You can see that the lights are not that great because I have just disabled my smartphone lights. But this. Uh, memories are really guile. <laughs> uh, yeah, these are really great memories. Uh, 1066 megahertz DDR2. If you get them four here inside, you got two, four, six, eight gigabytes of RAMs, which is fully enough for Windows 7 64 bits. And if you're running this on a SSD, you don't need any more. You don't need really nothing more to play one of the newest games. I got here a lot of them too. I'm gonna put all this here inside. This is gonna be a small computer just for me and a scene, the place to be. I got here some more. Zip. Look, wait, here. One more DDR2 memory, which I love it. This are uh, hard to get because these are very great uh, DDR2 we can say memories, okay, you can see that I got four of them, I'm gonna install all the four and then you have really a great small high-end computer with a nice Xeon uh, which has cost a long time ago about one thousand or two thousand dollars I'm, yeah, not talking uh, shit, really guys, this processors long ago has cost a lot of money and you can get them about 10 or 20 uh, dollars right now. <laughs> the only thing that you need is just some stickers like this ones here. You can also buy them already finished on eBay. You can buy these processors already finished on eBay. Uh, they come already uh, included with this sticker. Uh, but if you, yeah, had an, if you had an idiot that sends you a processor just here inside, Without protection, <laughs> this guy is really stupid and pissed off. <laughs> but it's okay, guys. Um, I have a nice video now done for you guys, and this is what is making me happy. I'm having now show you um, how you can make, we can say, a great small high tech or high end computer, an old one, but a great one. I can I can tell you guys. You just put your GTX, a GTX. Uh, 970 from NVIDIA and uh, it's all okay guys really just put here a, a big graphics card you got here PCI uh, Express uh, with 16 lines and a uh, great chipset uh, I got here SATA 3 which uh, is running very fast also with SSDs and you just need one SSD for your Windows 7 or Windows 10 or whatever I just need one SSD for the uh, operation system and then you can take just a normal HDD for uh, about uh, the games and all the rest for pics for videos and all the rest and yeah guys um, la di da we like to party that was me peace and the in the place to be he <laughs> he and yeah check this out guys if you have something at home like this you should go to the website and you can read a uh, lot of stuff there and you will really be able to get uh, you a great Xeon processor inside 4 cores with 12 megabyte cache and um, the biggest one I think is with 3.33 gigahertz uh, but you can see all in the side uh, it's a really great thing and you can um, yeah have a lot of power with we can say some older motherboards really guys okay guys see ya and bye bye and see in the place to be and see